What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, you're going to be talking about Western Kentucky wide receiver Malachi Corley, a.k.a. the Yak King is what they're dubbing him. Um, you know, the Steelers have had extensive contact with Corley really throughout the process with someone that I highlighted a couple months ago that I figured that they would be interested in uh, for reasons that we'll get into. But I want to go over his scouting report, go over all my notes um, on his eval. I just ranked my top 20 wide receivers for Steelers now. I will link that article in the description, you guys can go check that out, and then I'll kind of talk about where I graded and uh, put Corley on that list at the end of the video, as well as go over, you know, how I see him fitting into the Steelers' offense. But you know, Corley is a really interesting player, really interesting evaluation. Somebody who I think that a lot of draft analysts seem extremely high on. A lot of fans um, have been posting a lot of content uh, on Twitter. He's appearing on a lot of Steelers mocks, and really rightfully so. Like that, that's not just fan fiction, man. The Steelers saw him at the Senior Bowl. Um, they sent wide receivers coach Zach Azani to the Western Kentucky Pro Day. And then he's now headed to Pittsburgh for a top 30 visit as well. So we're kind of doing this scouting Steelers um, kind of series on the channel. I'm going over a lot of these guys scouting reports uh, because, you know, five guys that had top 30 visits with the Steelers ended up on the roster. So definitely want to see if that trend continues and try to get you guys my in-depth, uh, comprehensive thoughts on a lot of these prospects um, as we lead up to the NFL draft. So just before we get started on his scouting report, please just make sure uh, y'all do me a favor, like the video, drop me a comment, uh, make sure you sub to the channel, turn on notifications, all that good stuff is greatly appreciated on my end. Um, so Malachi Corley, senior from Western Kentucky, uh, like I said, senior bowl invite was, he just turned 22 years old a couple days ago. Uh, listed in 5'11", 215 pounds with 32-inch arms uh, at the NFL Combine. If you really want to look at it, he has the identical build to San Francisco 49ers wide receiver Debo Samuel. That's a comp uh, that he has gotten really throughout the process, just in terms of you know play style, but also you know very similar frames as well. Kind of get into some of that once we go over his scouting report, but you know, just some numbers. Uh, three year starter for Western, he's been heavily, heavily productive. Uh, 2023 finished with 79 catches for 985 yards and 11 touchdowns. Uh, had 11 touchdowns in 2022 as well, went over a thousand yards. Um, over 90 percent of his snaps have come in the slot, so pretty much uh, Corley lines exclusively in the slot if he is out wide it's usually at the foot of the stack they do these kind of wide stacks at western a lot which is where a lot of his production um, ended up coming from he averaged over 8.2 yards per reception for his career extremely you know dynamic player after the catch that was kind of his, that's kind of his calling card and what he does really well he forced 15 missed tackles last season he actually led the ncaa all of college football in yards accumulated on screen passes it was second in a uh receptions on screens um just kind of getting into you know his strengths uh things that i wrote down after watching him i actually watched a lot of corley which i'll kind of explain why that is not just because he's a steelers target but um just trying to get a feel uh for him because there were so few reps that i could really translate um but very dense um you know like i said 5'11 215 pounds really strong i mean he's built like a bowling ball um you know that running back type of build uh, play strength, very evident on film. This dude is a strong, strong kid. Um, you know, I think he's got solid short area burst, uh, enough long speed to crack explosives in the open field. There are some really dynamic plays of him, you know, taking throws, taking handoffs, taking reverses um, to the crib uh, for explosive plays. As a ball carrier, I think he's got really good vision, uh, shows the ability to set up blockers on screens, just has a really good uh, awareness for, you know, angles that defenders are trying to take on him in order to get him on the ground. Uh, but he can set guys up, does a good job in the open field, making sure he's maximizing uh, the space that he's given. Contact balance, very, very good. I mean, arm tackles, especially from small defenders. I mean, I'm watching some of these like 175, 180 pound DBs trying to tackle him. It just ain't good enough, man. Like if you don't go low on him and wrap up and get multiple helmets to the ball, uh, you're not going to get him on the ground. Uh, that's just plain and simple. Uh, some, some absolutely wicked finishes uh, from him as a ball carrier. Uh, finishers mentality, you know, stiff, stiff arms, truck sticks, all this different stuff. Just a very violent runner. I think back to, I believe it was the La Tech game from this past season. Um, like I said, he's aligned at the foot of the stack out wide and he's uh, basically just off the snap. He It's just a screen pass and they throw it out to him and it's him one-on-one -on -one with a corner. The corner tries to come up. He comes up too high and um, 
Corley basically bounces this dude's helmet like a basketball off of the turf and just ends up just completely in in his life. It was a vicious, vicious stiff arm. And then after that, he runs 60 yards for a touchdown. So, you know, th- that's kind of uh, his usage and some of the things that he does really well with the ball in his hand. That's calling card. Um, as a route runner, I do think there are flashes of him trying to win with physicality at the top of his break. I mean, like I said, he's dense. He's pretty strong, dude. So there are times where he gets to the top of the break. Um, and smaller DBs will kind of just bounce off of him and allow him to create space for himself. Uh, I do think he's got reliable hands. You know, it's kind of difficult when so many of his targets and so many of his catches came behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, but I do think that he has fairly natural hands and the ability to catch the ball away from his frame, which is something I value a lot, especially for a guy who's going to play at the slot at the next level. Um, you need to be able to go over the middle of the field, adjust to the football. And I think that there were some adjustments um, on in breakers when he was allowed to do that, um, where I saw him kind of go in between multiple defenders um, and catch the ball, make adjustments away from uh, from his frame. But, you know, 28 catches on screen passes last year, um, it, it was definitely t- it made it tough to get uh, evaluation on some of his stuff as a route runner. But. Um, as you'd expect, though, transitions really quickly uh, from receiver to runner. He does a good job getting his feet prepared, um, you know, on these quick hitches underneath and things like that. He will make sure that he has basically his outside foot already tilted upfield as he's securing the throw. And that just allows him to maximize, you know, his yards after catch ability. Really dangerous on crossing routes. I mean, I think he ended up with nine catches, 175 yards and three touchdowns. That was something that I noted bunch of big plays of just you know kind of against man coverage them kind of um running him on these small drag routes underneath he would do a good job making sure he's avoiding uh linebackers in that space in the box and then you know getting immediately upfield he's a really north south runner which is you know kind of something that i appreciate a lot of these kind of yak type of guys they want to do too much dancing um Corley wants to get upfield uh but i like his temperament as a blocker definitely somebody that if you're going to have him in the slot is this kind of quote unquote power slot type uh, he's willing to throw his weight around, and I actually think like he can he can improve uh, his technique as a blocker and be um, potentially a difference maker in that regard. To be honest with you, um, at the Senior Bowl there were some nice one one press and getting open, him using different type of releases. Um, I saw kind of an a step from the outside, a bully release, um, and just creating a little bit more separation. I don't take a lot of senior bowl one-on-one footage into my evaluation, to be honest with you, uh, just because those drills are so heavily slanted uh, towards the offense that I just I just think that they're they're not extremely valuable part of the process but for Corley they mattered a little bit more than most receivers just because you know we didn't get this chance to see him do as much of the other stuff in terms of running routes uh, like we did some of the other receivers in this class Um, now the kind of some of the negatives things that need to be kind of fine-tuned and worked on um, like I said, man, just really limited route tree. I mean, this dude, like, you know, over a quarter, like a third of his catches uh, came on screens last year. And like over the past two seasons, I mean, I think he's got like 80 screen targets or something like that. Um, but I just think as a route runner, he's just so raw, so unrefined. Um, he invites contact at the first and second level when guys are trying to press him. He just really doesn't show like much of a plan of attack on how he's going to beat that. And then when he gets to the second level, it just there's far too many instances of him just running himself into contact without understanding how to set defenders up. He lets guys get in, uh, get their hands on his frame, uh, needs to do a better job of using his hands to get guys off of him. There were just a lot of reps where defenders would make kind of first significant contact with him and stall out the route. And the quarterback would have to look the other direction because, you know, he's not even really out of his break yet on these timing type of concepts. Um, against zone, I saw him, there was a couple of times where he would drift at the top of his routes. Um, that was kind of an issue in terms of like knowing where to settle, make yourself quarterback friendly. He does lose momentum out of his breaks. Uh, we'll kind of talk a little bit about where he kind of needs to be or where I envision him. I think he's got some flexibility, um, to where he can get in and out of breaks. It's just after he's coming out of breaks, particularly like assistors or slants, um, he just, loses momentum almost slows down instead of exploding and creating more separation which oftentimes i felt like um kind of allowed defensive backs to catch up just lacks nuance as a route runner um there's no change in tempo it just doesn't really under doesn't show a, a significant understanding on how to set guys up how to manipulate defenders how to get them turned around 
Um, there were only like, I think I only saw like one instance where like he used a head fake to, you know, get open. Um, like I said, it's just a lot of kind of just going out there and just playing off vibes more than anything else. Um, I think it's tracking down the field. There were some examples that I liked on like slot fades of him adjusting to the ball. Um, but his catch radius, even though he does have like 32 inch arms, which is average ish for the position, um, just seems really limited. Uh, he's a career 26% contested catch guy. That's not really something that I was wanting to harp too much on just because I don't envision him being that type of player at the next level. And I don't think that he's going to be a deep threat to where that's going to be a significant issue. I really care about, is he going to be able to make the tough catches over the middle? I saw enough of that to be cautiously optimistic. Um, but in terms of like, if you're going to be throwing this dude consistent slot fades or asking him to run go routes or deep routes over the middle, um, on deep posts or anything like that, like that's just not his game. He doesn't have, um, he's not an extremely gifted leaper. Just doesn't show like a uh, really good concentration, um, in those type of situations. And that finally, I just think he's a good, but not necessarily a game breaking athlete overall. Like even on film against lower competition, I felt like there were times where, I wanted him to do a little bit more, stand out a little bit more just based on some of the teams that they were playing. Um, there were examples, like I mentioned, the La Tech game where he just looked head and shoulders better than every single person on the field, which was uh, kind of what you want from some of these smaller school uh, or non-Power 5 uh, players. Uh, but I don't think that he's a special or an over type of athlete. I just think he's a good athlete um, as he transitions. You know, he is at this point in time, like Corley is more of an athlete playing wide receiver than anything else. Like because um, he was asked to do so much for Western and, you know, basically be the entire engine to their offense. Um, his what he was exposed to at the collegiate level was just much less than a lot of other guys in this class. And, you know, that's unfortunately it's not really fair to him. And I almost feel like they did him a disservice in terms of his development because they relied on him to do so much, so many different things to just keep their offense afloat. I mean, I think back to the Indiana game, they opened the game, you know, your offensive corner has got this opening script, right? They throw him screens on three straight plays to open the game on the second, third and fourth plays of the game. They threw him a screen and it's like, man, like this, what is, how is this going to help prepare him for the next level? That's just, this is just not going to happen at the NFL level. So, um, you know, I do think it, like I said, I think his lower body is flexible enough and there's enough flashes of him showing good change of direction ability to where you can kind of see him being a good enough separator at the next level. Although I don't really ever think he's going to be a high tier guy in that regard. Um, like I said, there's just so much projection to his game. And I think it really um, – it makes for kind of an eye of the beholder type of situation. You know, whoever drafts Corley is going to have to basically teach him how to play the receiver position on the fly – as he's going into this big jump in terms of competition, you know, he's going from playing at a non power five school where he only got a couple of matchups against like, you know, NFL caliber talent. And then you're going to have to basically teach him how to get open and run routes um, on the fly. And that's not necessarily um, impossible, but I just think that um, it is you know, a noteworthy part of his evaluation. He's he's a player that's going to command touches immediately on screens, underneath throws. Um, and think that, you know, there's probably some teams out there that I would guess may give him touches at running back because of some of the vision stuff, um, how he plays, his build, like he's built to take carries and, you know, take some type of punishment. I do think his body will hold up really well, even if his play style is really violent. Um, but I, I just think it would really be surprising to me if he just came in right away and just took off as a receiver. So he's a pretty easy evaluation because to be honest with you, like I said, he's only asked to do a limited number of things in college. And to be fair, he was good at most of them. And, you know, Western trying to win ball games first and foremost. And it just, it kind of scares me a little bit because we've seen this archetype kind of come into the league, um, in years past. And, you know, Debo's really the, he's the heavy comp for Corley, but he's really the only type of or the only guy in that kind of archetype that's really had a ton of success. Um, and Debo has been a really good player, obviously a dynamic player when he's been healthy. It's just, I think a lot of these other players that we 
put in this tier. Like I think of like LaVishka Chenault was kind of thrown around in this kind of similar regard. Rondell Moore, Amari Rogers from Clemson. A lot of these guys that kind of come in as these kind of yak type receivers, um, you know, they, they just haven't had as much success. And I think it, it really becomes a question of two things, right? How much do you value his yards after catch or kind of gadget type skill set right now? And then, you know, where do you take a guy like that? And then how much do you trust your coaching staff to develop him into a more well-rounded receiver? If you think that you've got an absolute dude at, you know, your wide receivers coach and you're, you're like, all right, I see enough, you know, like I said, enough fluidity, enough change of direction ability to where I can get this guy and we can show him how to run routes and get open and we can ease him into the offense. I totally get wanting to take a swing on this dude. Um, having said that, though, I do think it's a difficult situation to put him into because this receiver class, even if I'm a little bit lower on some of the guys on the day two level, there's so many guys in this class that just get open and already understand how to get open at the collegiate level to where there's just a lot more translatable reps to what they're going to be asked to do in the league. And I just wonder if – you know, for me, he's the 59th ranked complete, ranked player on the consensus board at the moment. I just there's there's just other guys I'd rather have. And um, I ended up landing on him as my 19th ranked receiver. He kind of had a late third, early fourth round grade. If the Steelers, you know, ended up taking him with one of their third round picks, I can definitely um, I can understand the vision right there. The thing that would worry me the most about Corley is um, if you're taking that type of swing on day two, like you are obviously making enough of an investment to where you're saying like, all right, we're going to develop this dude into a legitimate receiver in time, but he needs time. If you're going to like in the Steelers case right now where they don't have a wide receiver too, and you're going to throw him out there with George Pickens and say, all right, let's roll the ball out. We're going to try to Maybe simplify the route tree, but you're going to have to be forced into being the number two or the number three option on a passing offense right now. That would scare the daylights out of me, to be honest with you. Um, there's just other guys. That, I mean, there's a couple guys on day two that I would at least be comfortable with in that situation. Um, but Corley is just not one of them right now, man. I, I would worry. I would be significantly worried if that was the plan. Um and who knows if it is or isn't. And obviously I like, I enjoy watching Corley play. I think he's a talented kid. Uh, hope he really succeeds at the next level. There's just a lot of projection with his game that I feel like maybe other analysts or other people aren't really giving enough like credence to, but you know, it's all an opinion thing on evaluation thing, but um, you know, definitely somebody to watch out for like Pittsburgh, like I said, showing significant amount of interest. I think he's, you know, on their radar in terms of like adding a receiver on day two. So we'll see how all that stuff plans plays out. Uh, if you guys, you know, made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. Uh, just make sure that you like the video, subscribe, uh, drop me a comment. Let me know what you guys think of Corley. If y'all, if y'all like him more than I do, like where would you be comfortable taking him, uh, whether for the Steelers or, you know, any other NFL team um, and kind of where do you guys value that kind of skill set? Um, just for me personally, uh, if you guys have listened to me on the channel, y'all have read stuff that I've wrote over the years, you guys know that I like just really value guys that understand how to get open and create separation. I just, I think that there's a potential for Corley to get there. It's just, I, I think we're, I think we're looking years down the road. Um, and I just think that there's a little bit longer, um, of a development curve than people are, you know, maybe anticipating, but, um, but yeah, appreciate you guys' support. I will be back. I want to try to get through a lot of these top 30 visits. But if there's a guy that you guys want to see a scouting report on uh, for me to drop on the channel, be sure to let me know. I'm probably only going to post guys that are like this in depth, this kind of like 15, 20 minute rants. Um, I'm only going to post guys that like have significant Steelers interest. But if there is a guy that's out there that you guys want to hear my thoughts on, uh, be sure to let me know. And then even if they're not a Steelers guy, uh, y'all drop them in the comments. I'll respond um, and give you guys my quick thoughts. But, yeah, just make sure you check out my receiver rankings on SteelersNow.com. I will link that in the description. And I will see you guys maybe tomorrow for another scouting report. Peace and love.